Hello once again, it's uh, Tim Golf 5 Tango Mike and uh, today we're going to have a little chat about balance and chokes. What are they? Do you need them? Let's find out. channel if you're uh, an established subscriber or one who's been here before and if you're new and stumbled across me well welcome and uh, think about clicking that subscribe button and also that bell button for any future notifications just want to take this opportunity to apologize for my look no, I should do that every week shouldn't I uh, but uh, especially today I haven't gone 10 rounds with Mike Tyson uh, it's because basically I've got hay fever. Uh, it's now peak hay fever season in the UK. I've got a grass pollen allergy, so uh, I look even worse than I usually do. So don't worry, I've not been in a fight or anything and come off worse. It's a purely an allergy thing. Anyway, enough of the medical stuff. We're looking at balance and chokes today. Now, if you're new to the hobby, or you've just passed your foundation, or maybe you just want to find out what they are, then balance and chokes have uh, a lot going for them. There's an awful lot of uh, mystique about them as well and uh, they're pretty simple things to use and have a pretty simple task to do. Let's see then why sometimes we need to have them. So first of all, what is a balun? B-A-L-U-N. What balanced means is basically balanced and unbalanced. And what it does, or what it's designed to do anyway, a one-to-one -one balun for example, is designed to match a balanced antenna, such as a dipole, which is fed in the centre with two legs coming off it, either flat or inverted V or whatever you want to do. Uh, that's a balanced antenna. Now, usually, of course, dipoles are fed with coaxial cable, which is an unbalanced feeder. So what the one-to-one uh, -one balance is designed to do is to allow the interface between the balanced antenna and the unbalanced feeder, in this case, 50 ohm coax cable. Now, with coax, of course, what it does, it acts as a sort of Faraday cage, in a way. So what happens is when you uh, key up and shoot some RF up your coax, it goes up to the centre conductor and then it flows back down through the uh, inside of the outer braid. And the shield of the coax therefore prevents anything much, anyway, from leaking out. Now that's usually the case and it usually works very well if your antenna is well matched. So if you've got a pretty good SWR at standing wave ratio, uh, by pretty good, 1.5 or less, or maybe slightly higher or less, you should find you shouldn't have too many problems. However, if there's any mismatch at all, then what can then happen is the RF energy can flip from the inside to the outside of the braid. And this then leads to problems because then that RF energy isn't therefore contained within the coax cable and can then cause problems known as RF in the shack. And that can lead to a multitude of issues. Therefore, the coax becomes part of the antenna system and radiates as part of the antenna system in that mismatch situation. So how do you know if you've got RF in the shack? Well, sometimes it comes on your audio. So a station might say to you, well, you sound like you've got RF. Now, RF sounds like you're speaking in your microphone in a wind tunnel. It has that sort of quality, a whoosh, whooshing sound, which, over, which masks over much of your modulation. That means you really can't be heard very well. Other issues? Well, you could have things like, for example, um, your uh, computer keyboard locking up, your mouse not working, your monitor switching off if you've got a computer. Uh, you can get things, something called mic bite, which means you basically get uh, sometimes a bit, of a, a bit of a kick off your microphone, maybe a bit of an RF burn sometimes as well if you're very unlucky. So um, these sorts of things can happen if you're operating CW as well, often means your key jams or clicks when you're not, you're not you know, giving you too many clicks when you touch it. Or maybe if you're operating on Vox, which is where your speech operates a headset, for example, or a microphone. Sometimes that locks on because of the RF coming into your shack. So it's something to really avoid. Apologies for the noises, by the way. We've got some workmen next to us, so uh, I'll try and talk over it. So what causes the antenna to become unbalanced, if you like? Well, you might have a dipole where you've got one leg which is in perfect free space, not near, not near any sort of objects or anything. And the other one, well, it might run close to a roof. Maybe there's a bit of metal in the roof or something like that, and that can cause the antenna to become unbalanced, which can then lead to these common mode issues, as we call them. So when that RF comes back down the, the, uh, the outside of the, of, the, uh, of, of the coax cable back into your shaft, that's known as common mode current, and that's what you want to try and sort out and stop before it gets into your shack. Okay, let's look at some examples then of uh, chokes and balance that you can either roll your own, or you can buy yourselves as well. So let's have a look. So here's an example of a commercial one, uh, ignore the cable tie, uh, LDG, one-to-one -one balance, it costs about 30 to 40 pounds. As you can see what it does here, like I said earlier, there's the, un there's the balanced antenna, the dipole, and there's the unbalanced, uh, which is the coax. 
Uh, simple to make actually these, if you open one of these up, obviously stuff on the internet about them. Very easy to make, um, but uh, if you want one off the shelf, it costs about 30 or 40 quid, you put this right at the feed point, where the two wires come off it for the dipole for example, and your coax comes down. Okay, this Frankenstein's monster is an example of an air wound choke, often made of coax. This is what I did for two meters, okay? So you basically got about eight or nine turns of RG58, around about a 25 millimeter former diameter there. Um, the lower in frequency you go, the larger it needs to be, and uh, sometimes the more turns you need as well, depending on the uh, on the impedance you're looking for. Um, for example, for 10 for 10 meters, you need to think it's four turns around a four inch, four and a half inch former, something like that. So it varies according to which. Uh, frequency. They are very frequency specific, okay? One of these, like we saw just now, would do a job from about uh, 80 meters up to 10 meters. These are band specific, so a choke for 2 meters would not do you a job, say for example, on 10 meters. So there you go. You can homebrew these very easily, and that chart, uh, which uh, I haven't already mentioned, from G3TXQ, uh, he will specify how to make these air round chokes. So they can be useful, but bearing in mind they are basically band specific, they're mono band, rather than these, which can do a job for you on a variety of bands. So this one's called a common mode choke. This one's made by MFJ, there are others. It costs about 30 to 40 pounds. Basically a lot of ferrite beads in line with each other. And effectively, they do the same sort of thing. They choke any stray RF on your feed line. So the role of a choke, therefore, is to increase the impedance on the outer part of the braid of the coax. And, um, well, usually, of course, it'll be 50 ohms, but now we want that to be a lot more. Uh, up to about 2,000 ohms would be wonderful, or maybe even slightly more than that. The reason why we want to do that is because RF energy takes the path of least resistance. So if you've got a lot of impedance somewhere, it's going to find some other way to go somewhere else, hopefully back up and out of your antenna. So by providing that path of resistance, effectively what the choke is trying to do is to stop that RF energy traveling back down your feed line and causing those problems we've spoken about earlier to do with having RF in the shack. One other one we haven't covered there, by the way, is um, ferrite beads. I quite often use to uh, clamp onto the coax at the feed point as well, provide some extra choking. And in fact, the um, the line isolator I showed you there, the, uh, the one from MFJ, is literally just a row of those. So, you know, you can put them onto the coax yourself at the feed point or wherever you want to put them. And they could be used in a variety of places, at the feed point of dipoles, for example. And people often use them as well on the, the coax uh, feed line itself, uh, coming in perhaps just before it goes into the shack on something like an N-fed antenna to make sure that uh, not too much in the way of common mode current gets into your shack as well. So there's a variety of places you can put them, and the design you choose suits where you want to put the actual thing itself. So the one-to-one -one current band is often found at the feed point of, of dipoles, for example. Uh, it's often used as well to provide a transformation from the uh, ladder line to a coax feed into uh, into a shack from a, something like a doublet antenna. And uh, I've done some something on doublet antennas before. Check out my 33 foot doublet antenna video where I did uh, something like that to show you how a, how a ballon can be used there. Um, and as I said, it can also be used on the feed line to stop RF shack coming into the sh uh, RF uh, coming into the shack. A brilliant resource for chokes uh, is uh, one from the late G3 uh, TXQ, that's right, uh, now silent key unfortunately, but he has done some fantastic work on chokes and has got a really, really easy to follow chart, but he's written some other stuff, loads of other stuff on it as well, he was uh, something of a guru. Um, I'll put a link to the website that uh, you can find out information on which will be useful for you to look at if you're looking to, uh, to do your own. Of course, going back to those um, uh, commercially bought one-to-one -one balance uh, you can make your own you know quite easily so don't see feel the need to have to uh, to buy your own there are designs on the internet where you can make those quite easily either within an enclosed box like that or you can just do it using a toroid and just wind some coax cable around it and use that sort of temporarily as a portable sort of uh, uh, ballon as well uh, there are also some micro balance on the market too that you can buy I featured one in my previous video on the quarter way vertical so Check those out too, and uh, there's loads around, loads of designs that would suit you. Um, obviously, as the chart, as the, the chart from G3TXQ will show you, if you look at that, uh, depending on the frequency you choose, depends on the type 
of choke and the, uh, the extent of turns you need to use, for example, on something like an air choke. It depends on the type of frequency that you're going to use. So whether you're on two meters, the type of choke you use up on VHF on two meters, for example, would be a lot different to the choke that you're going to have to use on something like maybe 80 meters. So that leads us back to the ultimate question, doesn't it? Do you always need a choke? No. Uh, dipoles will work without a choke, providing there, uh, you know, there aren't any, isn't anything that will start spoil the balance of the antenna. Chances are you'll be fine. Um, does it hurt to have a choke in place? Definitely doesn't. Uh, to have a ballon in place, one to one ballon at the feed point of a, of a dipole, or to have a choking line somewhere, doesn't hurt you at all. Just make sure that you don't get any RF in the shack, because once that comes in, it spoils, uh, spoils your operating. So I would say that chokes are something worth, well worth investigating. If you look at forums, for example, and type in, do I need a, a ballon with my doublet, with my dipole, um, then you'll probably have, uh, <laughs> going to see quite a lively discussion in front of you. Um, if you want a belt and braces approach to make doubly sure everything's going to work, put a choke at the feed pack or put a one-to-one -one ballon at the feed point of your, of your dipole. Okay? Uh, if, you, if you think there's no need to do that, then fine, go for it and see what happens. Anyway, hope that's enlightened you a little bit and that uh, you found that interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you again. And if you haven't clicked yet that subscribe or bell button, then come on, you know you want to. We could have you on board. Uh, this is Tim G5TM wishing you 73 and uh, good luck with your antennas. Bye bye.